Today in the spotlight, we're looking at a little SMD tester, the HP 990B. Let's take a look. Now this little pocket rocket has been out for a while. This is the B. Um, 990A was its predecessor and it did have pretty good reviews. Now the 990B is much the same as the uh, previous model, um, but let's see if there's any inherent differences. As always, you get a fairly decent box with the whole peak stuff. Um, here it's a generic one, SMD tester is what it is, and uh, it looks identical to the box. As well, you get a neat little plastic carrying case. Now this is handy dandy, better than just having the standalone SMD tester, um, you know, just rocking around in the toolbox. And in that case, that translucent case, you've got your set of leads because this meter actually can cohabitate with test leads. Then I'll show you that in a minute. Um, the leads themselves, fairly decent, believe it or not. They are small, uh, diminutive in size, but they do have that uh, feel of a uh, at least half decent quality which is a good thing finally wow look at that you actually get a spare tweezer tip as well um hey that's definitely a bonus overall fit and finish wise this is really nicely done for such an inexpensive uh, little smd tester um let's start off with those probes look at that they have a really nice plating on them gold plating and uh, they have a certain feel of quality so when you're actually bending them um, they're not you know sort of going back on their own equilibrium and just collapsing um, they really do have a fairly decent tactile feel now these are cheap like I paid around $18 Canadian for this probably about 14 bucks or so US um, now I mean it's at that price point it's hard to ask for better uh, quality than than really what they're giving you here um, has a nice heft to it pretty good feel in the hand um, and they have a nice rubber riser here on either side and that actually definitely helps when you're um, in there sort of probing it gives a much better tactile feeling and uh, overall you know, just a really nice feel in the hand which is important because when you're hovering over a PCB and you're you know diagnosing uh, looking for a problem what have you with such a small instrument it's really nice to have a, a good grip and a pleasant comfortable feel so a uh, good job whole peak Feature wise, uh, nothing, you know, grandeur. It's a 4,000 count uh, LCD display. Um, it's auto ranging, obviously a good thing. Um, it has particular tests, one for LED, one for uh, diode or zener diodes, and a battery power test as well. Um, you can test resistance with this and capacitance. And another nice thing as well is it also does continuity. So you got a lot of um, versatility in such a tiny little tester. And it's powered by, you guessed it, a couple of AAA batteries. And they fit into the back of the battery well, just like so. It's basically a slide mechanism. And there's your two springs. Battery is resting in. So nothing too fancy, but that definitely does the job. Power on, you simply touch one of the buttons and you get a little beep signifying it is on and ready for action and one of the interesting features is it has an auto power off but there is actually no off switch so yeah a little bit of battery wastage there but it will turn off or after about 10 minutes automatically so we'll start things off with the uh, diode mode here you can see i've got it on the middle selector now that's one thing i'm not too um fond of is that actual selector switch as well because you just basically overshoot all the time it's it's really hard to get it in the middle but uh, anyway start things off with the LED test and you can see we're looking at 24.54 volts and what that's saying is right now it will output up to 24 volts in the uh, LED testing mode so definitely enough juice to light up most let's start things off with the yellow and we can see we have that forward voltage drop 1.8 volts try the green LED and let's see if we can get it on there properly 1.8 volts as well let's try the red and 1.8 volts over to the blue led 2.6 volts and finally the white led 2.6 volts as well and obviously no issues illuminating any of them 
Now, I don't have any LEDs, uh, the tiny LEDs handy, unfortunately, but um, definitely uh, if you want to sort through different LEDs that you might have on the bench, find out which colors are which, this is a great little tool to do just that. And just to confirm what the SMD tester is telling us, indeed it is outputting 24.5 volts. So we have that small function switch here as well as a rel button and just hitting the function switch which brings us into continuity, uh, capacitance and resistance and diode. So yeah, just one little soft touch button gets us into whatever range we desire. Now I've got it in the continuity mode right now and I was just mentioning you do have those test leads that ship with it and as you can tell, yes, there they go. So they just simply insert into those little holes that were provided on the tips of the probe. Um, different, but you know what? It actually works. Um, they're not going anywhere. And yeah, it's it's bizarre, but functional. Okay, three, two, one, here we go. Amazing, very, very good. As I said, these are really some quality little probes. I'm quite surprising. They're rather heavy, even though they're so tiny in size, but look at that. Spot on, very surprising, 10 out of 10. Um, gold plating or something going on here, but I'm, I'm like freaking out. That works really, really well. Definitely usable in the field. Sixty-three point two DBA, the maximum output in continuity mode. Taking a quick look at that little user manual, there's the specs, and as you can see, definitely nothing to get too excited about. We're talking forty mega ohm for resistance, capacitance only up to two hundred microfarad, and uh, yeah. Um, so you know, hey, it's an SMD tester, right? Not a full-blown multimeter. So uh, you know what? I think it will suffice for most of us. Okay, we're in capacitance mode now. Let's just check a couple of tiny SMD caps here. And 11.8 nanofarad, and I know that's a 10 nanofarad capacitor. Here we go. 8.5 microfarad, and this is a 10 microfarad cap, so. Next up, we're gonna do resistance, so let's bring it into the resistance range. There we go. And we can start off by relling out the leads. Nice and fast, and look at that spot on. Try it one more time. Yeah, good stuff. Alrighty, I'm gonna start off with, uh, let's see, this is an old multimeter uh, PCB, by the way. Pulled that out a while back. Um, okay, so we've got one over here. This one says 103 on it. Now, if we do the calculation, it should be about 10 kilo ohms. So let's see what we have here. and almost spot on. Uh, let's see over here. Um, wow, that is so tiny. Got the one down here, it says 4531. That should be a 4.53 kilo ohm resistor. Oops, turn it around so we can see. Sorry about that. Let's see, it takes a little bit of while to get used to the um, overall method, but yeah, so 4.5, pretty, pretty accurate. Finally, we'll take a quick look at the uh, diode mode. Um, let's see if I can find a couple of diodes. So oh, here's one right there. That's quite a few actually. So here we are. And we see we've got an OL. So we're gonna just flip the board around. Try it again. And there's a forward voltage drop, 0.615. Um, Another one over here, 0.616. So yeah, kind of neat, kind of handy, and uh, you can save a lot of time. Hmm, what if this is any good at plucking hairs? No, 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 let's not try. Let's just not even go there. Finally, you can also check voltage with this little guy. That's right, voltage up to 36 volts DC or AC, and they're telling you right here, don't stick any more than that in. The love of God. Okay, so let's try a quick test. Sitting at 1.5 volts and no worries here. Go up to 3.7, yeah, looking good. 4.8 volts, beauty. Six volts, spot on. 
7.3 and finally it's actually 15 volts and 15.1 15.1 so hey looking good definitely you're not going to want to put this anywhere near high voltage but for just regular low end stuff you're going to be just fine okay let's take it apart see what's on the inside we are in and take a look at that we have a ptc now the previous incarnation the uh, a model uh, did not have any sort of input protection whatsoever. But uh, suffice to say, on the 990B, yeah, they have given us a little bit better uh, in terms of input protection. So that is always a welcome addition. Uh, there's our speaker for the uh, continuity. And there's a nice crystal oscillator. And look at the, the, the soldering job on those uh, contacts for the on-off and the uh, selector switch. Very, very nice. Uh, I really wasn't expecting that. And speaking of soldering, look at that. We have some nice big blobs of solder on those prongs. So yeah, they are definitely not going anywhere. Um, nicely done, nicely done. Now it's obviously a very small, tiny PCB. You can only fit so much on this, but generally speaking, they seem to have done a really good job. Uh, the main I see is Cobb. And uh, we have a fab date, it looks like of June 21st, 2018, revision two. So they've done a little bit of work since the uh, original model came out. I like it. I'll... On previous models, I believe there was some calibration pots, I believe. I'm not seeing any of that on this model. Last tomorrow, that is what feeds the LCD display. And we have a nice little uh, cushion here to keep that display in place. Flip over the PCB, and that is the uh, contacts for the Elastomar itself. Um, really not much else going on here. We've got our soft, uh, not our soft, rather, that is our uh, select switch, uh, the plastic overhang. But once again, you know, really clean, really nice PCB. Um, yeah, I am happy with what I see. Finally, we've got our contacts for the 1.5 volt battery. And once again, take a look at the contact uh, soldering job they did for those uh, prongs themselves, you know, really, really nicely done. Here's that really nice soft rubber overlay I was talking, talking to you about. Um, a really nice feeling and yeah, nice and supple. Old Peaks has done it once again. The HP 990B offers a lot of bang for the proverbial buck and that is definitely a good thing. Yes, it does all the right things and a few things more. It's got some terrific continuity, which I definitely was not expecting. So has a pretty good set of features as well with your resistance, your capacitance, and your diode and LED testing. Uh, definitely a useful device. No quirks, no qualms, no problems whatsoever. It just seemed to work. My only caveat probably would be to have a separate on-off switch instead of letting the batteries shut down after a set amount of time, but that's a small thing. I'm, I'm just nitpicking. No, the whole peak, HP 990B. Hey, if you're in the market for a cheap SMD tweezer, this one is the one to look at. The whole peak HP 990B gets a solid four out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Lots more coming up. I know we are housebound, most of us, if not all of us on this planet. So, hey, let's make the best of it and enjoy the time we have. Till the next one, keep on testing.